Okay, you're going to look at uh, part two, Age of Kings. And in the Age of Kings, the decline of feudalism, so the Middle Ages, all right, and setting up to where the nobles had all the power and everything else, the Renaissance, uh, the Protestant Reformation weakened the church, and the commercial revolution giving them all this money all served to enrich European society and a greatly increase the power of European monarchs. And here's some different ones. This is... Uh, this is uh, Ivan the Terrible, this is Henry VIII, and then this is Louis right here. Uh, so the causes for this uh, rise of kings and absolute monarchs is the church loses its power after the Reformation. Uh, great wealth comes from the colonies, the commercial revolution, and then large, large armies from constant warfare. So the kings had their own armies instead of relying on the nobles. So that's the end of feudalism. And all this leads to rulers that have total power. So here's some of the absolute rulers uh, that we'll get to a couple of them, especially Catherine the Great out of Russia. All right, so the growth of royal power in the Middle Ages, the power of kings had been limited by nobles, parliaments, and the Catholic Church. So those three really were kind of more powerful than the kings. In the 16th and 17th centuries, this began to change. Kings were now able to increase their power for a variety of reasons. So wars of religion. During the Reformation, most kings took control of the religion within their own borders. So just like Henry VIII in England, he becomes the head of the English church. So in England, Henry, Henry VIII made himself head of the national church as early as 1534. And the religious wars that followed the Reformation provided kings with an opportunity to have their own standing armies, not to rely on the knights that they had to get from the nobles during the Middle Ages. To introduce new government officials, this is another thing that they were allowed to do, which is bureaucrats, okay, which is kind of a bad word now in, in our country. And they could also increase taxes. So they had their own armies. They had a huge group of new government officials and they could increase taxes. And the, armies was, the army was actually used to put down any resistance on paying higher taxes. And then here's Henry VIII. And here's Henry VIII's uh, wives, uh, Catherine Aragon, divorced. Okay, uh, Anne Boleyn was beheaded. Uh, Jane Seymour died, natural, natural death. Uh, Parr actually survived the whole thing. Catherine Howard was beheaded. And then I think that's uh, Anna von Cleves was divorced. So the divorced ones were after he split with the Roman Catholic Church. But he did have two that were actually beheaded. So the changing role in nobility. So the nobles are going to lose their power. What's going to happen? So in the Middle Ages, nobles have been independent source of power. They had their own castles and everything else. So manoralism and, and feudalism. Many even had their own, uh, like it says, castles and armies. So in the 1600s, rulers like uh, Louis the the 14th tamed the nobility. In other words, he controlled them. <clears throat> so Louis built a magnificent magnificent palace at Versailles, where the nobles were forced to live, and they were actually there in his own palace with him. That way, he could actually watch them. So with his watchful eye, so nobles kept their wealth and their privileges but they were expected to, to obey the king's command. So really, he just has them all in one big house. Uh, the growing middle class and towns frequently started to ally themselves with the kings rather than the nobles. In the past, the people of the towns saw themselves as kind of aligned with the nobles, but now that changes. Now they align themselves with the, with the kings. So during the Middle Ages, kings were not very powerful. Instead, feudal lords had real power because they controlled the local manors and they had the loyalty of the knights. And the, the Catholic Church was also very dominant during the Middle Ages. And the Pope had the power over all the peasants. All this stuff is changing during the Age of Kings. So new theories arose on how to justify this royal authority. So they start to take more power. They got to kind of justify why they're doing that. Many rulers adopted the Renaissance view, justifying their actions as basis of, basis of reason of state going you know, all the way back to what we had talked about earlier, um, uh, that the, to make the state powerful was more, power, was more important than anything else instead of the church. All right, so in, an Englishman, Thomas Hobbes, wrote uh, that man is not naturally good. We've heard this before with the Chinese, some of the Chinese emperors. So without a strong central authority to keep order, life would be nasty, brutish, and short. It'd be terrible. 
society would break down into a war of every man against every every man against every man. Uh, Hobbes said kings were justified in seizing this absolute power because only they could act impartially and only they could maintain order in society. So he's saying without kings, uh, you know, society would just go crazy. So other monarchs like James I of England and Louis XIV of France justified their power uh, on the basis of divine right. So they went even farther. Divine right is uh, it's a theory that a king was the it was God's deputy on earth. OK, and and royal commandments were actually God's wishes. So that's divine right. And that's why you see uh, kings start to have halos over their heads. Uh, you see an angel with a crown getting ready to put the crown on the king's head. Here's Louis the 14th. And then here again is your you see your angels halo uh, getting ready to go over the king's head. So what you had were the people at the bottom, then you had the nobles, and then you had the monarchs, and then God at the top. So uh, absolutism, Henry the Fourteenth. So ab absolutism refers to a monarch's total control over his subjects. Louis the Fourteenth of France provided a model for this uh, for other absolute monarchs. His will was the law. So there's no constitution; it's just the king. Any critic who challenged the king was punished. Louis interfered with the economic and religious lives of his subjects. Uh, his regulations established standards for all French industries. Uh, he demanded that the Protestant convert to Catholicism or leave France. Uh, leading nobles were forced to spend most of the year residing with the king at Versailles. Uh, so they had no opportunity to dis, uh, disobey or rebel. Louis developed a large army with standardized uniforms, training and housing, which we see today. He involved his nation in a series of wars to expand France's frontiers, to bring glory to his rule. Although he uh, probably never said, I am the state, this expression accurately summarizes his views of royal power. In the end, Louis' aggressive actions served to unite Europe against France. Okay, So it, it kind of turned everybody against him, leaving his country bankrupt and exhausted at his death. So which conditions allowed many rulers in Europe to establish absolute role? So the loss of power by the church, uh, the end of feudalism, nobles losing their powers. They had their own standing armies, and then they became very wealthy because of the colonies.